Good morning, good morning. To get us started while we're waiting on people to come in, you guys feel free to say anything you'd like in the chat. You can say how you started your morning, how you started your day, <laughs> what the favorite part of it was, what you're looking forward to in this uh, webinar. Let us know, let us know who's in here. We love to get to know each and every one of you. I'll, um, I'll start us off. I've got a couple of counting jokes for us this morning. Um, so what do you call accountants that suffer or what do accountants suffer from that ordinary people don't? Any guesses there? Hi, Liz from Oregon. Welcome, Robert, Kelvin. The answer to that joke is depreciation. What do accountants suffer from that ordinary people don't? Depreciation. <laughs> I've got another one for us. Um, as I'll give it until you know ten oh five or so here. What does an accountant say when boarding a train? Any guesses there? <laughs> what does an accountant say when boarding a train? At least we're not out of balance. Good guess, Andrew. The answer is mind the gap, and that is G A A P. I'm sure you're all familiar. Hello, Grace from London, Lars, Michael. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Love to see you guys all joining. Wow, we've got people from everywhere. Charlotte, North Carolina. Amazing. What's the what's the weather like everywhere? It sounds like we got people from all over. We've got a couple more minutes here while people are coming in. Go on ahead and send on your uh, your weather forecast. Hot. Raining in Boston, says Robert. Lots of snow, says Janice from Colorado. I'm sure you got to hit those slopes. Rain and cooler weather on the way. Good morning from Alabama. Thunderstorms, Trey. Understood. Yep, I'm actually in Austin, Texas right now. We had a couple thunderstorms this morning. Ireland, sunshine. Oh, sunny in Zurich. Sunny in London. Okay, Europe is having a, a great day today, it sounds like. Awesome. Well, I love to hear it. Seattle is in spring. Gone from ice to 70 degrees in a week. I know the weather, it has been very hot and cold, hasn't it? Um, awesome. Awesome. Wow. Seriously, people from all over love to see that. Um, alrighty. Let's, I'll finish this off with, a with one more joke and then we'll get started here. What do you call an accountant without a spreadsheet? Lost. Yep, Janice, you got it. Okay, all right. Great job, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Thank you guys for joining the webinar this morning. Um, appreciate your time. So let's get started. So a little bit about myself. I, my name is Sonia. I'm the Client Success Director here at GA Con. I am located in Austin, Texas. I'm a Michigan State University alum, so I go green. Um, I use GA Con almost every day. And I am always ready to assist you with GACon and any needs necessary. Today, what we're going to be going through is pulling raw data using our new GACon UI in Google Sheets, um, in addition to generating new custom zero and QBO accounting reports. We've got setting up automation with our new UI as well in Google Sheets, going over what our sticky side floating menu is, switching organization with the new UI in Google Sheets, saving and using our cloud templates in our cloud template library, and setting up default values for uh, your user preferences with GACon. After that, we'll follow up with a live Q&A, but that is the general overview of all the new features we'll be running through today. Why are these changes and features important? Um, we've heard your ask for smoother navigation and <laughs> love uh, love the default settings. Awesome. Yep. And um, a easier to navigate UI. So we have implemented that. We've done an overhaul of the UI in those uh, areas I had mentioned. So that's going to help you get clarity in your finances, give you that streamlined, insightful reporting, personalized solutions as you can customize the uh, reports that you run here, and overall just enhance your productivity um, in general. So getting right into it, 
And yep, as Yolanda just said in the chat, if you guys have any um, questions along the way here, just go ahead and use that Q&A feature. Um, we'll start answering them as we go and then cover them at the end during the Q&A there. So to get started here, like I said, we've done a little bit of an overhaul in the UI for certain areas, one of those being the raw data pulls and downloads into Google Sheets for both Xero and QuickBooks Online. For Xero, you are going to have more than just get accounting data um, that you're going to see this on. You're going to get that for get it history notes and data, assets data, project data, and payroll data. And then in QuickBooks Online, you will just see this reflected in the get accounting data. So we should be seeing my Google Sheet now. I'm just going to walk us through a simple demo of what this looks like. So going to Geocon for QuickBooks, get accounting data and reports, and then get accounting data. This is where I'm going to select my specific accounting object that I would like to pull into my Google Sheets. I'll go for uh, invoices in this case. And at the top here, you're gonna see a bunch of different functions that you can use. So these are all just gonna help you narrow down what you're looking for. You can look up any fields here. It will tell you how many exist in the related attribute field to the object you selected. You can select all the fields, deselect all the fields. I'm gonna go with all selected in this case. You can expand down on fields with sub items. And then right over here, you can choose to use a static date range or dynamic date range. For the time being, I'm going to go dynamic and we're going to go last quarter. Hopping into our pool settings, this is mainly formatting based settings. This is where you can choose to um, have the report populate by choosing that start cell address, or you can have it create a new sheet by keeping this option on. The rest, as you can tell, is like mainly formatting based settings, like I said, highlighting every other row, displaying a date range or not. And then, as always, giving your template a name. And then these bottom two areas here are where you can filter by the related attribute fields or order by the related attribute fields or both. Completely up to you and how you would like this data pool to look and feel once it is executed. I'm gonna go ahead and execute for us now. Get these invoices pulled in. As you can see, starting to populate. Here we go. I do have all of the fields selected, so it's probably pulling over quite a bit of data here. But as you can see, here is my invoice report with all the uh, related information. And you can do this for any accounting object, um, as I had previously mentioned. Okay. Getting back to the presentation. So we do have new zero custom reports. We have new zero and QBO custom reports, but first we're gonna run through zeros. So as you can see, quite the lengthy list of reports that we have added to our portfolio of custom accounting reports. I'm gonna run through um, just setting up three of them for you, but these are all of the brand new ones that you should now be able to access with GACon in your Google Sheets. Hopping back over to my Google Sheet, let's go ahead and find those reports. So going to GACon for zero, get accounting data and reports, and then custom reports. First example I want to show you guys is the budget versus actual by tracking category report. So that's providing just a detailed breakdown of budgeted amounts versus actual expenditures segmented by tracking categories. There we go. You're met with the set of parameters that you typically are in GACon, and this is where you can hone down the data to your liking, play around with the date range, play around with the budgets included, regions included, and other tracking categories you may have set up here. Hopping into our pool settings, um, same as always, you can choose where this is going to populate with the custom accounting reports, and the rest are being mainly formatting-based pool settings, completely up to you and how you would like the report to look and feel once it is run. As always, giving our templates a name and then hitting execute. So this budget versus actual is going to help support any in-depth analyses of budget performance. And you can see that by the different aspects of business. 
the other custom reports I want to pull for you guys here just to give you an overview of some of what we have added new to zero. We're going to go for the age payable summary by contact group here. So here we are. Again, set of parameters that you can choose from to hone down your data. I'm keeping everything selected as is the default just for demo sake here. Keeping full settings as is, and I'm going to give this a name. Okay. And go ahead and hit execute. So this is great a great summary view of aged payables categorized by contact groups, helps in better understanding and managing your payables related to the different contact groups or suppliers that you may have set up in zero. Waiting for this to execute, and then I'm gonna show you guys one more, one more of the new zero custom reports, that being the aged receivables detail in customer currency. So as you can kind of tell already, we've got our two budget reports that are brand new and then aged payables reports and aged receivables reports with various levels of detail and various levels of grouping. Here's that aged payable summary by contact group. And then let's go find our last one. Aged receivables detail and customer currency. This is just great in terms of facilitating better management of your receivables in a multi-currency context. So age receivables, detail, customer currency. Again, being met with our parameters here, I'm keeping everything as is. Full settings, again, I am keeping everything as is here. I'm just gonna go ahead and give our template a name. For those of you who don't know why I'm giving every single template a name, this is just because it makes these templates easier to find, save, and automate later in time. It's just a best practice. Letting that run for us, give you an overview of what that might look like. I am working with dummy data here, so when you run these reports with your own respective data, it might look a little different, a little bit more populated perhaps. All right, there it is popping up at the bottom. Amazing. So we've got it all pulled in. And as you can see, it is nice and categorized for us in that customer currency. So heading back over to our presentation, we're going to move on to our new custom QuickBooks reports. So We've got two big ones here that we've added to the QBO custom accounting reports. The first being the cash transactions report, um, where you can essentially generate a profit and loss report with a comparison feature, enabling side-by-side -side analysis of the different classes or categories, um, in addition to our project profitability summary report. So this is a really powerful report offering clear profitability insights and enabling quick strategy shifts with solid data comparisons over time, helping you overall make better informed decisions based on historical performance. So let's dive in to what those look like and where to get them. Heading over to extensions, GACon for QuickBooks, get accounting data and reports, and then our custom accounting reports. We are going to go grab our cash transactions first. Here we go, cash transactions. And like I said, I'm gonna keep everything at the default with everything being selected, but just for a quick refresher, you can absolutely go in through each and every one of these fields, uncheck everything and select the specific items that you would like included or not included in your report. Again, for demo sake, I'm just keeping it as is, keeping pull settings as is as well. We're given those same formatting based pull settings and then just gonna go ahead and give my template a name. Hitting execute, we've got our cash transactions report, those deep links in there, telling us exactly what the transaction was and where it is coming from. Um, great, great overview of performance in the various sectors of the business. Going on to our second new custom accounting report for QBO, that project profitability summary. Here we are keeping all the parameters as is, going into my pull settings, giving it a name. And then going ahead and hitting execute. Uh, 
unfortunately in my dummy data for March, I did not have any project profitability um, data to show there. No worries, quick fix there. Just going to extensions, GECon for QuickBooks and edit templates for current sheet. We are gonna utilize our side menu, which we're actually gonna talk about in a little bit here. And I'm just gonna edit the template to change that date around and get us some get us some data that we can refer to. Awesome. There we go, awesome. So that's just an idea of what the project profitability summary report looks like. Like I said, very powerful report. Um, and yours is probably gonna look a lot better than mine with the dummy data. So moving on forwards. We're gonna talk about our new automation. We've implemented a new UI here and it's got a bunch of different features along with it. So this is going to help organize your workflows and automate reports within your Google Sheets. And as you can see here, it not only automates, but it also sends emails, sets up reports, uh, set up, sets up alerts on reports rather, creates backups, and then you could even go so far as to use something a little more technically advanced such as webhooks. So hopping in to QuickBooks, we're gonna go to automation, create workflow. And then in here, we're just gonna give our workflow a name, description, and then the operations log I always like to keep on. It's an automatically generated tab that's going to appear at the very end of your Google workbook with a literal um, operations log of when your workflow started to run, which particular reports were updated, and when that execution came to a successful end. At the bottom here, we have our scheduler where you can schedule the workflow to run and reports to be updated every three hours all the way to a monthly basis and pretty much anywhere in between. In our case here, let's say we'd like to have this run daily around 6 a.m., a little bit before our workday. Moving on to page two, this is where we are going to include the specific reports we would like to be refreshed in this workflow on that 6 a.m. daily basis we just set up. So I could go ahead and select all and move them on over to the right side or you can drag and drop like this. Main concept of importance here is that the reports you would like included in the workflow are over on the right-hand side. Moving forward from there, our email section. Uh, when the workflow runs and the reports are updated, the workflow will send out an email to anybody that you specify in this to field at the top here. So this could be your own email, this could be internal coworkers' emails, or it could be an external client's email. Um, anything of the sort, really dependent on what you are doing with the data and who you would like to share it with. It is going to send out with the subject and message of your liking, and you can attach the updated data, not just as a spreadsheet link, but as an Excel file, CSV file, and two different formats of PDF. Moving on over to alerts. Alerts are more conditional rules that you're going to set on the data. So just for an example here, I'm going to create a rule I can see this journal entry has the amount of a negative thousand. So I'm selecting the range or cell that I would like to pay attention to as it updates over time. I'm not typing anything in, just hitting this icon. It recognizes cash transactions. Cell J5 is exactly where I'd like to look. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that this data is a number. And if that number goes anywhere over negative 1000 for whatever reason, when it updates, workflow runs at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, data is updated for whatever reason, this journal entry has gone over negative 1000, I'd like to be alerted of it. And by default, your own email is going to be included in there, but the same logic applies where you can add anybody else's email you'd like here and give it a little alert message. In this case, went over negative one. Creating that alert rule, we've got it set in place and you can set up to 20 of these alerts per workflow. Webhooks are a feature, a technically advanced feature that automate data processes between Google Sheets web app and your accounting software. I'm actually not going to dive into these in too much detail today. Um, they are not pertinent to your workflow. You can skip over them and still create your workflow, no problem. We do have a YouTube video going over these and we'll make sure to get that sent out to all of you guys um, to provide that further context on webhooks and how to use them. Last but not least, we have our backups. I know that QuickBooks Online and Xero do backups of accounting reports, but they do start to self-delete after a given amount of time. Our backups do not do that. 
So if you turn this on, what it's going to do is every time the workflow runs and your reports are updated, it is going to back up that report data into a static copy of the workbook and save that in your Google Drive. It is a great way to get a historical look at your data as it is updated over time. Hitting Create, we've got our workflow up and running as of 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and every day after that. My reports will be updated to the latest and greatest information out of my QuickBooks Online. And this new automatic workflow goes for both Zero and QuickBooks. Moving on, we've got our sticky floating side menu and categories with icons. So this is just a design element that we've implemented and you can find it on the side of your screen. I'm actually gonna hop back into my sheets to fully demo this for you guys, just to, so it is easier to visualize. You can see I actually already have it up, um, but to get there, really easy, going to GACon for QuickBooks and then edit templates for current sheet is going to bring up that side menu. As you can see, this menu is going to remain fixed in place as I go through my different tabs in my workbook, so I don't need to worry about that. It is always accessible. And then if I scroll all the way to the right here and hover my cursor over the very right hand side, you're going to see all the different menu options that would typically be available in the extension dropdown are much more easily accessible and available to me right here from the side floating menu. So this is again sticky, it's gonna stick with you. You can access cloud template libraries, settings, um, uploads, everything you'd like all from the side menu here. Really handy little feature, um, keep an eye out for it, utilize it, it's a lot more time saving than running up here to the top and having to go down and find exactly what you're looking for. So we've got it set out in nice little categories with these lovely little um, pictograph labels. So easy to find what you're looking for, pretty intuitive, and it'll help you um, just save time along the way. Getting back to our presentation, we're gonna talk about how to switch organizations. So this is in the case that you have more than one organization in Zero or QuickBooks, and you wanna set up reports and workflows uh, per different organizations. Switching between entities in GACon is actually quite easy and simple. So the way to do it is going to extensions, either for GACon for QuickBooks or GACon for Zero, and signing out from this initial company that you have signed in with. This is going to enable you to then sign back in with the secondary or other company that you would like to use data for. Once you do this and have your companies connected, this is a one-time process, the signing out and signing back in with the new organization you'd like to connect. Once you've done that, the organization will be connected and you can go either to extensions, switch company here, or like we said over here in that side menu, you can also access it right there. When you hit this drop down, I am working with dummy data, so I just have the one here, but every connected company that you have at the moment will appear in this drop down. You can select the one you'd like to use in terms of running reports with their data and so on. This blue button switch company will turn blue and you can select it and you'll get a little successfully switched companies message, letting you know that you can move on forwards with running reports on this new organization's data. The cloud template libraries. So the cloud template libraries are quite a useful feature that GACon provides. We have three different, different areas of the cloud template library that I'd like to draw your attention to. So we have our GACon cloud template library, with, which is a collection of pre-built templates that can be easily customized and loaded into a user's Google Sheet to automate common accounting processes and tasks. Mainly these are created for uploads templates, that is um, those using our two-way sync, conversion of QBO to zero and vice versa, in addition to KPI templates that can be used with our pre-made KPI dashboards. You guys might have remembered um, a webinar we did a little bit ago actually going through those KPI dashboards and how to use them. So to show you where that cloud template library is, we're going to go to load cloud template, GACon cloud template library.
And then as you can see here, upload invoice with multiple items, update classes, you can search zero to QBO, just like this. You can search for anything that you're looking for. The KPI dashboard specific templates are going to be right here under KPI. And then the rest in general are uploads utilizing that two-way sync and directing you how to initially pull the data with the respected or related attributes that you need. And then you can utilize these templates to push the data back into QBO or Zero, um, respectively, whichever one you may be using. So the other cloud template library is the Workspace Cloud Template Library. So the Workspace Cloud Template Library is a feature that is a personalized library to the user being yourself, allowing you to create and share custom templates within your organization. This makes it easy to standardize processes and just promote consistency in general across your team. So if I wanted to create a cloud template from any given report, I could absolutely do so by going to edit templates for current sheet, and selecting this middle icon, Create Cloud Template. Going ahead and giving it a name. We'll call it Cash Transactions Custom Demo. So this is going to save this report template exactly as I set it up. If I had any particular settings or custom uh, modifications that I had made to that template setup, it's going to save them as I've set them up, not the default we get our successfully saved message. And then to access this custom report in our personal library, we're gonna to go to load cloud template and then workspace cloud template library. From here, once our window loads up for us, thank you everyone for being patient. But from here is where we could run our custom accounting report. And in the meantime, let's say we switched companies, um, no matter what workbook you're in or what company you are signed in with, you can absolutely always access these cloud templates and utilize them. So if you had one consistent report, you know you are going to run across the five different organizations, for example, you have connected, this would be a great way to run that same report with all your custom settings without having to set it up over and over and over again. As you can see here, there's that cash transactions custom demo report that we just saved and we are accessing now in our cloud template library. You can label these. You can see I have a couple um, labeled demo. Hitting this plus icon will allow you to do that. In addition to sharing these. So if you have a GACon subscription package that allows you to have a license with more than one user under it, you can actually assign user permissions and team member roles, and then go ahead and share these custom accounting reports with members of your team or with everybody under your subscription package and license just by specifying an email or hitting share with everyone here and going ahead and hitting share. So a great way to share reports across a team, especially if you're all working on a project together or working on similar processes together. The other item with the cloud template library I want to point out is the batch cloud template library. So the batch cloud template library is going to enable you to apply a template to multiple sheets at once, saving time and effort when working with larger data sets. This is great for when you know that you have a specific set of reports, for example, that you know you will be running across three or four different companies that you have connected out of your QuickBooks or Zero. In this case, for each company, if you want to set up those consistent reports and not have to go through, create each one, and then execute each one, you're going to have access to your entire workspace cloud template library. That is your own personal cloud template library in the batch cloud template area. And here you can select multiple reports, the specific ones to your liking, and going ahead and hitting execute will run all of these reports with the organization's data that you're currently signed in with. If you want to run this with a different organization's data, like we already went through briefly, you would just go to extensions, GACon for QuickBooks, and switch company, or use that side menu if it's open for you at the time. 
So that is the overview on the cloud template libraries and how to use them, how to save, use, and share. Setting up default values in user preferences. So we have two sets of default values and both QuickBooks and Xero, um, one being set for raw data downloads into Google Sheets, and then another being uh, default values set up for our custom accounting reports coming into your Google Sheets. So to show you guys how to access and modify those, we're gonna go to GACon for QuickBooks, and we could either do this through the side menu or the top menu. I'll pull up the side menu here just to show you where to find and do that. Here we have our tools, user preferences, or using the drop down at the top, we're going to go to that same area, tools, user preferences. Either way, it will take you to the same area, whichever um, route is most convenient for you. And then you can see the default data pulling settings. So these are the uh, Google data downloads that you're pulling into your Google Sheets, or rather QBO data downloads that you're pulling into your Google Sheets. And you might think that these look a little familiar, and you would be correct. That is because these are reflective of the pull settings when you go to set up a raw data download um, template. So if you know that you have a select few options here that you would like turned on or off for the most part across all of your raw data pools, this is where you could go ahead and select those. It will default every raw data pull, um, pull setting that is to that you have to these that you set up here. So if I wanted to highlight every other row on every single raw data pull I do, I'd go ahead and do that here hopping into our default report pulling settings. So these are for the custom accounting reports. And again, might be looking a little bit familiar. That's because it should be. These are the pull settings for our custom accounting reports. So going through, this is where you can again, go ahead and add or unadd items that you don't like included in your formatting. And you know that's going to be consistent across all of the accounting reports that you pull. Once all is said and done, we want to go ahead and hit save. We get our saved message and we know that we are good to go. Changing template ownership. So there are a variety of reasons why you may have to change template ownership. Um, this could be somebody leaving the company. This could be somebody going, um, you know, departing from, from the organization in general or having a different email address, um, or you, it could just be a transfer of responsibilities. So this is basically, you can as you can see here, it's going to have your current email as you're signed in as the current template owner. So any templates that you have set up, any custom items that you have set up, any, any reports that you have set up with GACon uh, belong to you as of now. To change that, what we are going to do is again, go over to extensions, GACon for QuickBooks. And again, you can access this through the floating side menu should you need to. We're going to go to tools and then change template ownership right over here. Now this is a final process, so I'm not gonna go ahead and do this myself. But as you can see, I am the current template owner here. If I would like to transfer this ownership over to anybody for whatever reason, I will just input that new email address and then confirm it and hit change. That will make the final change that cannot be restored. So I do urge you to use this with caution. It's not something that can be reversed too easily, um, but yeah. That is how to change template ownership and transfer either uh, responsibilities over or share with a coworker that is taking over for somebody else. Okay. All that being said and done, I know that I ran through quite a bit in uh, a little bit of a short amount of time here. So any questions now 
Let's see. I see we have 13 answered, so I'll start running through those. Let's go. Thinking of uploading bank statements using GACon. Currently, we do it manually in zero by uploading a CSV file. Absolutely, you can upload bank, bank statements from zero, um, and you can set it up in that automation workflow like we had discussed. Uh, the way that you would get those bank statements would be going to a raw data pool. That would just be going to get accounting data, um, that first section that we had talked about with the, with the updated UI. So you're going to see that when you go ahead and use it. This is being recorded and I can watch it later. Yes, absolutely, this is being recorded and we will distribute the recording after the webinar is over. What about FX rates for all currencies is active in zero? Some of them might not have transactions in the period. We are pulling FX from our vendor. You can see small discrepancies from zero, but if majority of cases, in the majority of cases, FX from our vendor will match with zero. We support more currencies than zero has through our vendor. You also have the ability to set up FX in Google Sheets and by using a cell reference to pull needed, possibly calculated exchange rate for your templates. For example, you can apply that to a PNL. Yep, is it currently possible to import bank statements? Yep, it absolutely is. So through that get accounting data section, um, again, you're gonna see that new UI. You could absolutely import bank statements from there. Uh, we do also have our wiki documentation going through that. Uh, great reference if you guys haven't checked it out already. Pulling exchange rates on a particular date. So. Yep, you need to pull that raw data for the invoice table. And one of the attributes is called zero exchange rate. That is what is available in zero. We do offer a multi-currency converter where you can select any historical exchange rate for the last 10 years. But we also have a video how to do this on our GACon Academy channel on YouTube. For example, looking for a loan account with all the debits and credits. The detailed transactions report in the custom accounting reports would probably be your go-to there to give you all that detail, all the debits and credits, transaction by transaction, line by line. Is there any way to generate an account report for a specific account in COA or if not, will there be? Yep, you can do this by selecting specific accounts in the accounts filter. So you can find that accounts filter in uh, accounting reports, such as our profit and loss, balance sheet, and so on. Uh, but you need to calculate totals and the, you need to calculate totals and the profit and loss traditional layout will be lost in that sense. Yep, do the sheets update as a new month is complete? Yep, as soon as you keep your automation running, setting it up in that workflow and automating your data, we will keep updating your data until, until you tell us to stop. Can we get an AP and AR at consolidated level? Great question, yes it is, and that is on our to-do list. As of right now, we do not have that, but we are working on it. Offering charting capability, for example, revenue and profit by month. So, yep, here you would want to use something like a PL report um, and then select monthly periods and the previous periods you'd like to compare with. Then, selecting the historical layout, we'll base this on a flat file build um, in dashboards, which includes charts the way you want to see it in Google Charts, Looker, Microsoft Power BI, and any other BI softwares. Okay. If you import profit and loss and make a change in zero, can you update and refresh figures? Yes, make a change in zero. Yes, yes. You need to update separate transactions such as invoices, journal entries, bills, and so on. As soon as the data is updated into or uploaded into the source system, the PNL downloaded report will reflect those updated values. Yep. Uh, 
Okay, I see we have. Can data be pulled by criteria other than accounts, such as classes or locations? Yep, absolutely. So in QBO, we have all these filters available. I know I just went through the few um, different reports for you guys, but in each report setup, it is going to give you a set of parameters relating to the specific report that you are pulling. And so that is where you can go ahead and hone down the criteria that you're using to have the data that you'd like included or not included in the final report um, customized. Can you give a quick overview of webhooks? Yep. Uh, yep. We'll be sending out a link to our video on webhooks and how to use them. Um, after this webinar. Uh, we do have it currently posted on our G Account Academy, that being our YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, that is that's where to find some documentation on that. We'll go we'll make sure to provide a few more resources um, on that moving forwards. Offer a spend by contact report pull from zero. It's a standard report in zero, but not seen in available pulls. We, yep, we'll check with our internal team and see if this is possible for us to integrate. Keep you posted. We do love the feedback in terms of what you guys are looking for, um, things like that, standard reports in Zero that may not currently exist in GACon. Always looking, always looking to get better. I work with 17 sets um, of QuickBooks. I have each company's data sets on a unique Google Sheet. I have automation running as at the shortest interval. At times, I need the most up-to-date data. Is there any way to refresh all sheets connected to GACon with one click? I am working on a script, but did not want to recreate the wheel if you had it. Yep, absolutely. So setting up one workflow with that automation tool that we had run through, um, you could go ahead and include all the different accounting reports for each of those companies. Um, and with one click, you'd have an, an automated wheel running for you, if you will. Okay. I will say... Um, Outside of a outside of a workflow, if you are looking to go ahead and refresh your reports just manually, you can always do so by going to GACon for QuickBooks or Zero, going to refresh, and you can refresh the current sheets or all sheets. That is a manual refresh outside of the workflow, but we do encourage you to set up a, an automated workflow and that way you don't even have to go through and click on anything um, of the store in terms of the drop down menu. You don't even need to be at your laptop for that to run and send emails out, alerts out as uh, you had set it up. Okay, let's see here. Something that would be incredibly valuable as a workbook with customer statements, one customer per tab already available or something that could be built with the workflow tool. So, yep, in terms of customer statements, one customer per tab, we do need to think on it. Let us confer with the internal team on that one. Thank you. Awesome. Keep the questions coming if you guys have them. Um, you know, I'm sure this is helpful for anybody else that had any curiosities. You. No more questions? Okay. If there are no more questions, I guess that um, is wrapping up this webinar. So those were our new features, how to use them, access them, and play around with them. Um, just overall to enhance your efficiency, your data analysis, and your understanding of all the financial data you got in your accounting software. So thank you guys all for coming. 
We really do appreciate it. Like mentioned, we will be sending out a follow-up with a recording of this webinar um, and any resource links there. Yep. Yep. Any resource links there. So, yep, it looks like we have no more questions. Um, I'm going to round out the webinar. I'll stick around for five, ten or so minutes if anybody has any, any other items they'd like to discuss. But other than that, I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for joining and hopefully we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you all. Stay posted. We've got new things coming.